coming up and in the works. We look into the nuts and bolts that make up the Academy of Engineering at Eastlake High School, see how students are maneuvering towards victory at a robotics competition, and tips on how to transition into an engineering career from the president of an aerospace and defense firm from right here in the Tampa Bay area. throughout Pinellas County that prepares students for career or college after graduation. I'm Jamie Dempsey and I'm Victoria Horn. Each episode will highlight a different career academy, magnet program, or other opportunities for students in the district. Today we are featuring the Academy of Engineering at Eastlake High School. The Academy of Engineering at Eastlake High School has helped students challenge themselves academically and prepare them for a career. Students are taught industry-specific skills in the classroom, make connections with engineering firms through internships, and gain insight into what to expect in the workforce. Eastlake High School has one of the most prestigious engineering programs in the country, taught by instructor Paul Wanish. We uh, incorporated our program in 2003 as a not-for-profit foundation, uh, and the Career Tech Ed Foundation is what started the funding of the program. Uh, my wife and I, when we sold our company, determined that it would be nice to give something back. And so we took money and started a not-for-profit, and, and that's what started the program. As students heard the success stories from recent graduates, the program's popularity grew. They've definitely, I've watched them, I've seen their accomplishments, and they're definitely excelling in all, everything that they do. They're very dedicated and they put their minds to things, and uh, they're definitely a big role model for me that I know that it is possible to be able to complete the engineering and excel in that. When Wanish was younger and in high school, students did not have the courses available that they do today. We had uh, wood shop, metal shop, but uh, the intensity, uh, the level of learning that takes place in this program is much higher than that. It's not just about measuring a piece of aluminum and cutting it and making a, a sweep, if you will, for uh, your broom. The four-year program puts an emphasis on science, technology, engineering, and math, which means students who are enrolled will have a challenging course load that rewards them as well. It's aerospace engineering, principles of engineering, there's a digital electronics class. We do different things, uh, a lot of different things. Right now we're working on truss analysis and bridges and stuff in PoE, aerospace working on different types of aircraft and uh, digital electronics working on digital circuits. Lori Maxson, the senior program manager with the Society of Manufacturing Engineers Education Foundation, came to evaluate the program to see if they could be designated as one of the top programs in the country. I just spoke with a member of the partnership team here with this classroom and his engagement and from what I'm understanding the engagement of the community as a whole is so strong and that's what we're looking for is a program that has not only a great program and a great facility but also very strong community support. As students grow in the program there becomes more and more opportunities to gain experience in the business community. When, when the student turns 16 has an opportunity to do an internship. We call it career mentorship uh, because it truly is an apprenticeship type program. Uh, we work with Kelly Services. We have a national contract with Kelly. It gives us an opportunity to take any 16 year old student and put them into a real life situation working, doing real work in, in an engineering environment. We placed 83 students last year. The hands-on experience prepares students for college and their future careers. It prepares you really good because there's a bunch of steps that take you to, closer to college. And as you get higher, there's different difficulties you could take to just prepare you more. When Wanish started the program, his goal became building a better future for his students. It is phenomenal to see what these students have the opportunity to accomplish. And it is rewarding as an, as an instructor to be able to give them every opportunity of not only what we can learn and see in a book, 
but be able to communicate and relate what I saw in the field for 27 years in my own company. The four-year program continues to grow. During the first year, around 20 students enrolled. Now, over 400 students have applied for the 2013 school year. Recently, robotics teams from across Pinellas County gathered at Seminole High School to put the principles of engineering to the test. Victoria Horn has more for us from the U.S. First Robotics Pinellas League Championship Tournament. Hi, my name is Victoria Horn, a senior from Northeast High School. Here at Seminole High School where the robotics competition is taking place. Let's hear from a few competitors and mentors and see what's going on. Go! Seminole High School's gym was filled with gears, gadgets, and gizmos. Recently, high schools across Pinellas County attended a robotics competition held at Seminole High. The high school teams competed against each other for title of champion at the Tectacular FTC Pinellas League competition. We meet once a week at the beginning. As we get closer and closer to our uh, competitions, we start working two days a week. And in many days, we have everybody over my garage working until 2 in the morning. Uh, they do whatever they have to, to to make these bots work. Each team member designed different parts of the robots and worked together to complete a working model. Teams assigned a captain and mentors volunteered to help the robotics team prepare for competition. Uh, it's given me access to uh, different resources and things that I wouldn't have in my own time. Um, we've got the whole engineering community kind of helping us out. We're sponsored by Raytheon. So I've got access to tools and materials and things like CAD software that uh, I couldn't get on my own. Once the robot is completed, the students work on the project to see if it functions correctly and if it doesn't, how it could be fixed. What had happened to us is we built a uh, robot in preparation for this event. Uh, we made a major change to our old design and um, it used a scissor lift and uh, two to three days ago uh, we realized that it didn't work at all. And so the last two days we've spent putting back our old robot back together and um, today we was our day that we had to see if that worked. Robotic students had the chance to work with software programming and tools that they wouldn't be able to use anywhere else. The event is about more than building a working robot. Relationships and teamwork are just as important. All of our teams work together pretty well and the one thing as mentors we try to do is support all of our teams as equally as we can. Um, the teams, you know, all do their own designs. They figure out how they're going to do it. They have to do it themselves. Our job as a mentor is to um, kind of challenge them sometimes and, uh, and help them make it their idea work. As you can see, robotics takes a lot of teamwork and preparation. Each match lasts two and a half minutes and the object is for the students to design robots that can maneuver a series of rings. Building robots is one way for students to apply engineering concepts outside the classroom. Another opportunity for students could be interning at a company like Southern Manufacturing Technologies located in Tampa, Florida. Jamie Dempsey interviewed Roy Sweatman, the president of SMT, and has more on what the company is doing to prepare students for careers in engineering. Hello, I'm joined with Roy Sweatman, the president of Southern Manufacturing Technologies, and he also works with students from Eastlake High School. Mr. Sweatman, can you please tell me a little bit about your involvement with Eastlake High School students? Okay, sure. Uh, you know, I first found out about Eastlake's engineering program a few years ago. Uh, through Paul Wanish, who's the, who started the program and runs it. And so we got involved uh, in the beginning to uh, make parts for the, to the first robotics for their Team 79. So we've made some of the parts and helped w work with them. And then we started, uh, I joined uh, the CTEF board, which works with Eastlake. And uh, we sponsor uh, tours of shops every year, in, including SMT. Uh, so we've had uh, several busloads of students from East Lake and some of the other schools tour the place. Uh, we then uh, started to do some interning. We have uh, several students that uh, either current students that are working part-time or graduate students that some are working part-time, some are working full-time. So we've, you know, that's, that's a great deal about what our involvement has been. With the interning program, what do students or graduates get the chance to do when they're interning here? Well, they get to learn uh, inspection equipment, how to measure parts. Uh, you know, the, being a machine shop and making parts to very close tolerances, uh, it requires the ability to measure them, and it requires the, the ability to understand math, trigonometry, things like that. So they learned to 
to practically put that kind of thing to use. Uh, they also get to work on the machines. We've, we've taught them how to, to run the machines. Uh, uh, one of the graduate students it's who's now going to, to college at uh, USF, is, uh, he's been working out very well. He works full time for us and uh, you know, does setups and uh, it has become a real big part of the company. How does starting at the high school level help students in their future career as an engineer? Well, the, you know, I think it gives them the, the, the exposure to see what the practical use of whatever engineering is, is uh, involved with. Uh, they get to see if they're going to design something, a mechanical component. They get to see how we make it, what we have to do to figure out how to make it. Uh, you know, they get the hands-on experience, learn how to hold tolerances so they don't design something that's uh, too difficult or costly to make. Um, I, I think every engineer should have uh, hands-on experience to, so they really know what they're, what they're designing and talking about. Now I know that you specialize in making parts for aircraft, aerospace, and defense. What do you think that is the most important thing that students need to learn before they go into the industry? Well, they just they need a good background in, in STEM education, you know, uh, math and, and uh, you know, those kinds of things are what's invaluable. We, if you don't know that, then we have to teach that. So, uh, you know, to be an engineer, to, to be one of our machinists or setup people or programmers, you really need that background to understand the math. How do classes now compare to classes before comparing difficulties? Well, you know, it was a long time ago that I was in high school, so uh, things have changed a great deal. I mean, we didn't have computers back then. Uh, you know, I learned how to do things on a slide rule, if you can believe that, if you even uh, have heard what a slide rule is. But, um, you know, today's with the computers, uh, a lot of the stuff that we used to have to figure out manually is, is, is computerized, and, and so they, they have to be more knowledgeable of the computer and use that to, to get the same kind of stuff done and do it much faster. Same thing when they go to use our machines. All our, or the majority of our machines are computer controlled. So learning how to use those, understand the programming language, program them, you know, all that kind of stuff is, is kind of what they learn, you know, with today's computer environment. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And we can't wait to see what more that you have in store for the East Lake students. Southern Manufacturing Technologies works with over 20 clients to build 900 different products. They ship over 20,000 items each month. It's time for our In the Works career question. Which country has the world's largest manufacturing economy? A. China B. The United States of America C. Japan or D. Germany The correct answer is B. According to the World Bank, the United States of America produces 18.2% of the globe's manufactured products. That's all the time we have for this edition of In the Works. Don't forget you can check out all of our episodes anytime online at newsroom.pcsb.org. Or you can catch us on the Pinellas County Schools TV station, WPDS. I'm Jamie Dempsey. And I'm Victoria Horn. We'll see you next time.